Hello and welcome to The Lawn Hustle. In Andy's first episode, you will learn how his life changed overnight. Hello, my name is Andy Wilson. I live in Newcastle, Indiana. Newcastle is a community in East Central Indiana with a population of approximately 17,500. I have been in business for 15 years, serving Newcastle and the surrounding area. This is my first podcast because I am so far out of my comfort zone because of the way I speak. With that being said, allow me to share with you my story. 20 years ago, I woke up one morning and I could barely speak above a whisper. I was not experiencing any pain. I just could not talk. My wife called our family doctor to schedule me at an appointment. When I arrived at my family doctor, he began his examination and said, I feel as though I need to refer you to an ENT, an ear, nose, and throat specialist. Oddly enough, he was able to schedule that appointment for that very same day. So that afternoon, I went to the ENT and he began his examination by placing a scope down my throat. He almost immediately pulled the scope out and said, Mr. Wilson, you have a tumor in your voice box. It is wrapping itself around your vocal cords and it is paralyzing your vocal cords. It's not allowing them to reverberate and produce sound. And that is why you're having a difficult time speaking. He said, we have to remove the tumor. You have to have surgery. They scheduled the surgery. The surgery date came. I arrive at the hospital and check in. The doctor performs the surgery. And I remember waking up in recovery The doctor stopped by to check on me and he was very optimistic that he had got it all and that everything would be okay. When I was discharged, I was giving instructions to return to the ENT in two weeks for a post-op appointment. When I returned to the ENT, He again placed a scope down my throat. He pulled the scope out and had news that I did not want to hear. The tumor was back. He said, you need another surgery. This happened several times. Each time when I would return from my post-op appointment, the tumor was back. One day I woke up to begin my day. And as the day progressed, I began to develop difficulty in breathing. 
That afternoon, I called my family doctor and advised him that I was having trouble breathing. The ENT was notified and I was told to meet the ENT in the emergency room. When I went to the emergency room, the doctor began his examination by once again placing a scope down my throat. He pulls the scope out and said the tumor is back and it has grown rapidly. The tumor is now the size of a golf ball. The doctor looks at me and says, if we do not get this tumor out, you have two weeks to live because the tumor is closing your airway and you will die in two weeks. I asked the doctor when is surgery. He said, today. No time for surgery prep because it was an, an extreme emergency. I call my family and they all rush into the hospital. Laying there in the hospital bed, tears streaming down my cheeks. The doctor steps in and says, your voice box looks as though it has been moth eaten. He said, I'm not sure yet, but when we go to surgery, I might have to remove your voice box. So whatever you want to say to your family, say it now. I will never forget looking up at my wife. My two small children were there. My mom, my brothers, and my sisters. I'll never forget looking at my wife and telling her, I love you. Looking at my children and telling them, Daddy loves you. Telling my mom, my brothers and sisters, that I love them. Not knowing if that would be the last time they would ever hear me say those words. Tears were flowing. The curtain opened up. The surgery department stepped in and said, we're ready for you. So we all hug each other, tell each other once again how much we love each other. They wheel me down a long hallway into a cold, sterile surgery room. The surgery was several hours, but I remember waking up in recovery, my wife and my mother by my bedside. My wife leans over and whispers in my ear, they got it all and they didn't have to take your whole voice box. They only took half. I did not realize that in surgery, they placed a tracheostomy tube to help me breathe. I tried to talk, but I could not get words to come out. I remember thinking 
If they didn't take all of my voice box, why can't I speak? But eventually they taught me how to speak with the tracheostomy tube. I was in the hospital for several days and was discharged. Again, I was told to return to the ENT in two weeks for another post-op appointment. When I arrived, the ENT began his examination by once again placing a scope. But this time when he pulled the scope out, there was a smile on his face as he said to me, we got it. There's no sign of cancer. Cancer did not win. Cancer changed me, but it did not defeat me. Cancer changed me, but it did not destroy me. If there's anyone listening to this podcast today, Maybe you're fighting cancer or you have a family member or a friend who is fighting cancer. Can I say to you, don't you ever give up. You can defeat cancer. I begin this podcast by saying I'm uncomfortable and I'm out of my comfort zone because of the way I speak, and that is true. But this is me, and there's nothing I can do to change it. Cancer changed the way I talk. But today, I own and operate a growing, thriving, successful business, professional lawn maintenance. In future episodes, we will talk about how I got started, where I want to go, and where I am now. In episode number two, we're going to talk about my humble beginning. So join with me in my journey. Thank you for listening today. And let's get to know each other through the lawn hustle. Hello and welcome to the lawn hustle. Season number one, episode number three. In today's episode, let's talk about setting goals. The word goal is thrown around a lot these days, in so much that at times it can become confusing as to what a goal really is. So I ask you, what is a goal? A goal is a desired result that you and your team are committed to achieving within a specific time frame. Goals can be daily, weekly, monthly, yearly, and you can have a five-year growth goal with a specific plan to reach the goals that you have set. Let's talk about a weekly goal. 
If my business professional lawn maintenance is doing a paver patio and I set a goal that by the end of the day on Thursday, we need the paper set and the polymetric sand swept in, then I must break that goal down into daily goals in order to reach the ultimate goal. Monday, we have to do this. Tuesday, we have to accomplish that. Wednesday, Thursday, we have to do this in order to wrap the job up on Friday and walk away with another quality job done by professional lawn maintenance. That is a weekly goal broken down into daily goals to help me achieve the weekly goal. Dominican University of California researched and found that there is a direct correlation between setting goals and achieving success. When you started your business, and when I started my business, we did not start to fail. I will be the first to tell you, there have been many times I wanted to quit. There's been many times it would be easier to throw in the towel and go to work a nine to five. But I started my goal with success in mind. And I have determined that failure is not an option. If I have to tweak and adjust and make new goals in order to help me find the success that I desire for me and my family and my business, then I will do what it takes to be successful. Let me just say this. If you fail to plan, you plan to fail. Can I say it again? If you fail to plan, you plan to fail. Obviously, it's not just about setting goals. It's about achieving those goals. Goals, what are they and what are they not? Before setting a goal, you must have an understanding of what it is. It's a desired result. What do I want for my family? What do I want for my business? What do I want for my retirement? These are desired results. And I must come up with a plan of action to see the results come to fruition. A goal is a dream with a deadline. A goal is a dream with a deadline. What am I dreaming about for 2024? What new piece of equipment should I buy? How many clients should I take on? How many side hustle jobs should I take on to reach my goal? How much do I want to make this year? And what am I going to do to reach that goal? Goals are time sensitive. And they can be broken down into smaller goals. 
to achieve the ultimate goal. For example, if my business is doing a privacy fence and I want to complete that project on a Friday, then Monday, my goal is to drill all the post holes, set the post. Tuesday, I'm going to start installing runners and pickets. Wednesday, I want to finish running out the pickets and build the gates. Thursday, I want to hang the gates and do a punch out, walk the perimeter of the fence looking for any loose screws or anything that needs attention and doing whatever it takes to complete the job on Friday. So every day I have a goal of what needs to be accomplished on that day to help me wrap up the job on Friday. Those are little goals that I can accomplish to reach my big specific goal of privacy fence completion. When it comes to your business, don't be afraid to dream big dreams. Don't be afraid to set big goals. But set realistic goals. Think outside the box, but remember, unrealistic goals brings a feeling of defeat which brings a feeling of, I should give up, I should quit. I'm not made for this, I'm not cut out for this. Set realistic goals. In running a business, there's plenty of times that I have felt like giving up and felt like quitting felt like throwing in the towel, felt like going to work for somebody else, finding something else to do completely. Running a business is hard, but the end result must motivate me to keep going. What motivates you to hustle? I was asked one time, what is your motivation? My answer was, when I wake up early in the morning, between 4.30 and 5 o'clock, and I stumble to the coffee pot, I walk through a house that has a mortgage, I pass my kids' bedroom, I look out the window and see a truck that has a payment. And those things become my motivation because I know my children need a place to live. They need clothes on their back. They need food on the table. My wife deserves those nice things. And that is what motivates me to hustle. That's what motivates me to set a goal. That's what motivates me to be determined and committed to reach the goals that I have set. When you set a goal, it gives you a sense of purpose. When you set a goal, it gives you a sense of control. Now that we know what a goal is, what Goals are not is equally important. Goals are not objectives. If your goal is to learn to mow beautiful stripes, the objective is to practice with your mower until you lay a straight, beautiful stripe. 
Goals are not resolutions. I don't know about you, but I hate New Year's resolutions. They're usually broken within the first week, but I digress. Let me get back on track. Goals are not resolutions. Because resolutions are often temporary. And they give you a short-term gratification. And I'm not in the lawn care business for the short term. I'm here for the long term. I'm not here just to get by this month. I'm here to get by until I retire. A resolution is a decision to do or not to do something. And a goal is something that you want to achieve. When you set goals, you identify what you want and what you need to achieve it. Goals motivate you to take action. Every journey begins with one step. Now that you know what a goal is and what a goal is not, let's talk about how to set a goal. When setting goals, you have to ask yourself, what inspires me? What am I passionate about? If it's a mowing service only, then I'm going to be the best I possibly can be until I am the best in my community. If it's landscape design and install, I'm going to be the best at installing mulch, river rock, decorative stone, whatever the case might be. I'm going to be the best that I can be until I'm the best in my community. Is it installing hardscaping? Is it aquascape? Understand that your goal should be meaningful to you. If it doesn't matter to you, it's not going to matter to your team. I need to say that again. If your goal doesn't matter to you, it doesn't matter to your team. Because if you are a leader, you're going to project that excitement and that enthusiasm to become the best in your community. And your team members are going to buy into the vision and buy into the dream. And they will work hard to help you complete the goal. So your goals must be meaningful. And when you look back on the goal, it must provide you a sense of pride once you meet it. When I started mowing grass, I could not for the life of me keep a line straight. It might be because of the equipment that I had then. Now, I only run grasshopper mowers. A big shout out to grasshopper. But I would practice and practice and practice until I learned the art of mowing a straight stripe. And I would look back on that yard and you're as guilty as I am driving by a property and telling the family, I mow that property. Look at those stripes. Set goals that you can control. Set goals that you can control. Unrealistic goals create disappointment. In goal setting, you are literally Imagining your future. 
In goal setting, you are determining how much money do I want to make? And how many hours am I willing to invest in order to make that money? I said don't set unrealistic goals. Set smart goals. Goals must be specific. They must be measurable. They must be obtainable. They must be relevant. And they must be time bound. Goals must be specific and challenging. Goals must make it clear when you have reached your goal. Goals must be obtainable. If you only have a riding lawn tractor and a push mower, your goal should never be to make six figures a year. It's not going to happen. That's an unrealistic goal. But if you have several 52 or 61 inch cut grasshopper mowers and you have employees to help you run two or three uh, crews, then that goal is reachable. It's got to be obtainable. And it's got to be relevant to your business. And it must contribute to your company's success. Set time-bound goals. An open-end goal with no time restraint is just a dream. Add time limitations to your dream and it becomes a goal. If there's someone listening to this podcast that has learned the value of setting goals, I wish you would get a hold of me. Follow me on Facebook. Follow me on YouTube, Instagram, TikTok. Search professional, lowercase lawn, professional, lowercase maintenance. Give us a like and a follow and a shout out. Let's work on this together. You can be and I can be successful. But our success will be determined by how big of a goal we set and how realistic is the goal that we set. And what smaller goals can I set to help me reach my ultimate goal? Thank you for listening to The Lawn Hustle. We'll see you again next week with another exciting episode of The Lawn Hustle.